Congratulations, Hawkeyes, and welcome to the University of Iowa's 2021 Spring Commencement. Obviously, we're recognizing your commencement in a unique way, but even though our entire celebration is virtual, our pride in your accomplishments remains as strong and bright as at any Iowa commencement. In fact, you're a very special class of Iowa graduates. Having finished your studies during a global pandemic, unprecedented in our lifetime. Throughout it, you showed commitment and resilience in completing your degrees, and you set a great example for our entire campus. As always, we stand together together as Hawkeyes with strength, purpose, and pride. Today, many of you are gathering either in person or virtually with your loved ones, and any commencement is also a recognition of a team effort. So today, we also thank and recognize the family members, friends, teachers, mentors, and so many others who have added their support and their love to get you here to where you are today. I'd like to just take a moment and have you reflect on all the help that they have provided. Because I want you later in your life to think back on this moment and think back on all those loved ones who got you here pay it back. In the future, remember all the support they gave you and return the favor to some other person who needs it in their lives. Soon you will be moving on to new phases of your own lives, whether that be professional or personal or community and maybe even educational. But know that you've been a very central part of our community. You've added your excellence to this entire university while studying here and you've contributed to our campus and larger community in so many ways. And looking forward, we're grateful that your future accomplishments will always be part of our proud Iowa legacy. We know that you will represent yourself, your university, and your profession with honor and integrity. And we know that you will make people's lives so much better through your talent, your compassion, and your newly minted knowledge and skills. Even though the years ahead promise major changes for you, please know that the University of Iowa will always be here and welcoming for you to come back to our campus. As alumni, you will always be part of who we are, who we have been, and who we will become. Once again, congratulations, good luck, and best wishes for great success in the wonderful years ahead of you. We are very, very proud of you. And remember, as we like to say around here, once a Hawkeye, always a Hawkeye. Go Hawks! Welcome graduating students, family, and friends. I am honored to join President Harold in bringing you greetings and heartfelt congratulations from the University of Iowa on this very special occasion. There is no question this is a very different graduation day than the one you have probably imagined many times over the years. But even though we're at a distance from each other, you can be sure that today you are surrounded by the joy and the very best wishes of your peers, family, and friends, as well as the many faculty and staff who have been your teachers, coaches, and mentors, and who are all so very proud of you. It's been a real privilege to work with you and to watch what you have achieved along the way. As proud as your family and friends are at this moment, you should know that this is also one of the proudest moments in the life of your college and the University of Iowa. This is what we work so hard for, to see our students achieve their goals. Even better is knowing how very well prepared you are to transition into the next stage of your professional or academic life, wherever your path may take you. You've worked with excellent faculty and mentors, received the highest quality education, and met rigorous academic standards. You've built powerful knowledge and skills while demonstrating the talent and drive it takes to succeed as a student at Iowa. As if that weren't enough, this graduating class has faced unprecedented challenges that tested your determination and your resilience, and you came through it with flying colors. When you put all of those qualities and experiences together, knowing that you are going to be putting those strengths into the service of your professions and your communities, it's exciting to think about what a difference you will make. You will be innovators in a time of change, leaders in your field, and champions of social justice. You will continue to learn and discover and create. You'll be a positive force in the lives of others. And through it all, you will be carrying on the proud tradition of the Hawkeyes that came before you. 
I know you will continue to make us proud, just as you have always been proud to have graduated from this great university. The University of Iowa community joins me in wishing you the very best success. Good morning. I am Donald Attender, the ninth dean in the storied history of the University of Iowa College of Pharmacy. It is my distinct pleasure to offer a heartfelt welcome to President Harold, College of Pharmacy faculty and staff, loved ones and friends of the graduates, and most especially, members of the graduating class of 2021. To each and every one of you, we extend sincere greetings and special thanks for the honor of your virtual presence here at today's unprecedented commencement celebration. Today marks the college's 135th commencement and most notably, one that will serve to recognize graduates at the forefront of a national campaign to vaccinate citizens during this pandemic. The graduates we are recognizing have completed a long and rigorous course of study. Of course, this year, the word rigorous takes on a whole new meaning. The manner in which these graduates have comported themselves both personally and professionally as they navigated the uncharted waters facing them throughout an intense year of experiential education bears special mention. The class of 2021 will undoubtedly make an indelible mark on the annals of pharmacy education here at Iowa, the likes of which has never been seen before and God willing, will never be seen again. Speaking on behalf of the faculty, I can assure you that we are most confident these graduates are extremely well prepared for the challenges of healthcare delivery in the 21st century. This morning, we are gathered here to celebrate their achievements and bid them well on their impending journey. I would like to take a moment to recognize a very special group of individuals. For the past four years, the men and women who comprise our faculty have given much to enrich the lives of our graduates, intellectually, emotionally, professionally, and I must add, depending upon the subject matter at hand and the student's level of preparation at exam time, spiritually. Frankly, for a secular institution, I have witnessed a whole lot of praying at times. We are indeed blessed to have a truly outstanding faculty. By virtue of their research, they are pursuing better ways to deliver healthcare or are in a never-ending quest to identify new molecular moieties that are crucial to discovering new drugs through their scholarship and their scholarship of teaching, they are always striving to impart new knowledge, stimulate critical thinking, and hone students' problem-solving abilities. And through their tireless and extraordinarily dedicated efforts at effectively overseeing medication management, patient care, and enhanced in countless ways the manner in which they deliver care to patients. Theirs is truly a labor of love. In normal times, I would ask our faculty to stand and be recognized. Of course, that is not possible during this virtual ceremony. So instead, I simply want all to know that I am extremely proud to serve as dean of such a capable and highly dedicated group of men and women whose contributions to the profession are immeasurable. Events like this, even virtual ones, are made possible because of a highly talented staff. Staff members do so much behind the scenes to help advance all facets of our complex enterprise. All the planning and attention to detail are evident in so many ways and are especially visible in the quality of collegiate functions. Their efforts bring a healthy measure of panache that ultimately makes our college so special in the envy of others. I feel very privileged to work closely with such capable, considerate, and a caring group of staff who are such integral members of our college family. Thank you all for all that you do. I would like to take a moment to thank parents, 
grandparents, spouses and partners, and other family members and friends of the graduates. Your kind and considerate concern for the graduates' well-being during their time as students, coupled with your personal, moral, and financial support, has been evident in helping these graduates achieve today's important milestone. I join our graduates in publicly acknowledging all that you have done through your expressions of love, support, and encouragement. Your participation in today's ceremony means more than I can adequately put into words. While we may be separated physically, I know we are joined as one emotionally. On behalf of the graduates, a heartfelt thank you. At this point, during a typical commencement ceremony, I would relinquish the podium for others who would address the graduating class, and I would then return for some closing comments and a final goodbye after degrees were conferred and the graduates were hooded. But as we all know, these are not typical times, and this is not a typical commencement ceremony. Therefore, this is the only opportunity I will have as your dean during this virtual ceremony to bid you well in the days ahead. Hence, I would like to offer a few words for you to ponder before recognizing the other speakers. Professionalism. Yes, we've come full circle from when we first spoke of professionalism during the white coat ceremony. You likely surmise that I would address professionalism one more time. What you choose to profess and how you choose to exercise all of the privileges that will be bestowed upon you as a pharmacist will be decided in the days to come. Pharmacist, just saying the word connotes much in today's society. Responsibility, respect, integrity, trust, and a profound connectivity to those we serve are but a few of the things that quickly come to my mind. Henceforth, you will be called pharmacist for several reasons. First, you have earned the distinction that the title carries through years of study and hard work. But bear in mind that this is also a beginning point and not an end point. You will always be required to continue to learn and hone your skills. For a true healthcare provider's time as a student never ends. Second, you are about to enter into a very special covenant with the public. That covenant will willingly place lives in your hands. And in return, you will be obligated to draw upon all of your special knowledge and skills to help ensure the health and safety of those for whom you have been entrusted to serve. That reality has never been more evident to a graduating class than it is in today's unprecedented environment. In that regard, I would like to paraphrase a quote by William Osler. He who studies pharmacy without books sails an uncharted sea, but he who studies pharmacy without patience does not go to sea at all. The waters you have begun to learn to navigate in recent times provide immeasurable challenges in patient care, the likes of which humankind has seldom witnessed. Harness the knowledge and skills you have acquired. Place a firm hand on the tiller and join your brothers and sisters in healthcare delivery by working together to help tame those seas. And third, you are now a member of a very select community. This community called the profession of pharmacy is one built upon trust, discipline, uncompromising integrity, effective communication, collaboration, caring, and a firm commitment to health promotion and disease prevention. Our profession demands these things and the patients we serve have come to expect nothing less. For these reasons, and so many more, you will have the unique privilege of forever bearing the title pharmacist. 
I feel especially proud and privileged to be the first to call you a pharmacist because I know in my heart that each of you is so deserving of this recognition. My heartfelt congratulations to each and every one of you. Thank you all, and go Hawkeyes! It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce soon-to-be Dr. Locke Wynn, president of the class of 2021. Locke was born and raised in Sioux City and is a first-generation Asian American. Prior to pharmacy school, Locke obtained a bachelor's in both human physiology and chemistry from the University of Iowa. During his time in pharmacy school, he was actively engaged in various college and university committees and student organizations, including, but not limited to, serving as class president, safety chair for the graduate and professional student government, honor council representative, an ardent College of Pharmacy ambassador, and an active member of Phi Lambda Sigma Pharmacy's Leadership Society. Following graduation, Locke will begin practicing in health systems pharmacy in Dallas, Texas. In my mind, Locke epitomizes the type of balanced student that we are trying to nurture within our College of Pharmacy family. Academically driven, professionally engaged, and exemplary in demeanor. I want to acknowledge Locke's family members who have joined with us today. His parents, Father Nian and Mother Hong, who have strongly encouraged him to pursue his passion for pharmacy. His brother, Lane, a pediatric critical care pharmacist at Memorial Sloan Kettering Center in New York City, who continues to challenge and support him. And Locke's partner, Julie Wynn, for her staunch support throughout his academic journey. Thank you all. Now, I call upon Dr. Locke Wynn to provide remarks to the outstanding class of 2021. Thank you, Dean Latender. Let me express my deepest gratitude for the privilege of delivering this year's commencement speech. I'll start off with thanking my mother and father for always being there for me. On behalf of the class of 2021, I'd like to thank all of the faculty and staff at the College of Pharmacy all of the professional and personal mentors, and all of the families and friends who supported their loved ones through this program. You deserve the same caliber of recognition as anyone on this virtual stage. Thank you. President Barack Obama once said, change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. I'd like for us to take a moment and reflect on your time at the College of Pharmacy. Reflect on your past self and who you are today. Chances are you've changed. Whether that was your ideology, perspective on pharmacy, or the number of gray hairs, you've changed and for the better. And just as the field of pharmacy is changing and adapting, our class is no exception. Some of us had our rotations canceled and some of us were rejected from fellowship and residency opportunities. And some of us even lost our loved ones. Whatever the setback, you persisted through pharmacy school and the pandemic. On the other hand, some of us experienced opportunities at unexpected sites. Some of us were offered the position of our dreams and some of us found new loved ones. Whatever the accomplishment, you persisted through pharmacy school and the pandemic. Four years ago, we took the oath of the pharmacist. The two vows I'd like to revisit today are, one, I will consider the welfare of humanity and relief of suffering my primary concerns. Two, I will hold myself and my colleagues to the highest principles of our profession's moral, ethical, and legal conduct. It's unfortunate we're not able to celebrate this milestone in person. However, we can continue to uphold the integrity of the oath with the help of technology. I thank my classmates for their consideration for the welfare of humanity and holding each other accountable to the profession's highest moral and ethics. This commencement is sending a message to the world 
that we are not just a collection of students, we are the next class of pharmacists ready to impact the field. When we were presented with obstacles, we used our grit, resiliency, and skills to persevere. It's been a long time coming, but because of what we learned in the classrooms, how we performed on rotations, and where we will end up practicing, change will come to pharmacy. And all positive change that has impacted human civilization starts with someone. Look in the mirror, figure it out, and go for it. I'm happy that I joined this class, and to that I say congratulations, class of 2021. Our commencement speaker today is Dr. Lucinda Main. Dr. Main, who I've known for much of my professional career, serves as Executive Vice President and CEO of the American Association of Colleges of Pharmacy. As the leading advocate for high quality pharmacy education, AACP works to develop strong academic scholars and leaders to support excellent professional doctoral and postgraduate degree programs and to build relations with key constituency groups, both inside and external to the profession of pharmacy. Prior to assuming her current role in July 2002, Dr. Main served as Senior Vice President for Policy, Planning, and Communications with the American Pharmacist Association, APHA. Dr. Main is a pharmacy graduate of Auburn University and received her doctorate at the University of Minnesota. She served on the faculty at the University of Minnesota where she practiced in the field of geriatrics and then served as an associate dean at the Sanford University School of Pharmacy. Dr. Main has been active in leadership roles in and out of the profession. Prior to joining the APHA staff, she served as speaker of the APHA House of Delegates and as an APHA trustee. She currently serves on the board of directors for Research America and is an executive committee member of the American Foundation for Pharmaceutical Education. She has been honored with several prestigious awards, including the University of Minnesota Outstanding Alumnus Award, the Linwood Tice Friend of APHA ASP Award, and the Gloria Niemeyer Frankie Leadership Mentor Award from the American Pharmacists Association. In 2017, she was stall installed in the Alabama Pharmacy Hall of Fame. And in March 2019, Dr. Main received the Remington Award, the profession's highest honor presented annually by APHA. It is with a tremendous degree of pride that I welcome this year's distinguished commencement speaker, Dr. Lucinda Main. Good morning. Dean Latender, faculty, family members, friends, and especially members of the class of 2021. I'm so thankful for this opportunity to provide a few thoughts as part of your commencement activities today. This has been a crazy time, as everyone listening is certainly aware. We are now in month 15 of a global pandemic that has impacted everyone in ways large and small and taken far too many lives. I pray for the health, safety, and vaccination status for everyone. It was a blessing to receive my J&J &J vaccine in early March. As you heard in my introduction, I spent five and a half years due north of Iowa, first as a graduate student, and then as a member of the faculty at the University of Minnesota. Despite the rivalry between Minnesotans and those of you from Iowa, I've enjoyed both knowing the great pharmacists from this state and my visits here over many years. My last visit, I believe, was for the inaugural Zeta Cooper Leadership Symposium several years ago. Since Professor Cooper served as the secretary for AACP while she was on the Iowa faculty, and for 20 years as secretary during the time before we had even a single staff member, I've often thought that she most likely contributed to the very survival of the association. And for that, she has a very special place in my heart. As I pondered a theme for this address, three alliterative words came to mind, prepared, positioned, and paid. Paid, that is, to 
to deliver quality patient care. I'll spend a bit of time on each of these as they apply to your careers in the profession of pharmacy, a profession about which I am truly passionate. The class of 2021 graduating from the University of Iowa is extraordinarily well prepared to embark on whatever pathway you have chosen. I know that because of the Iowa pharmacists I have known across the 41 years since I graduated from Auburn University. People like Bob, Matt, and Marilyn Osterhaus, Jay Curry, Randy McDonough, Barry Carter, and more recently, Drake grad Kelly Jo Welter as she served as National APHA ASP president. In fact, I could have filled the rest of my allotted time for these remarks, continuing to name Iowa pharmacists I admire. But I also know that you're well-prepared because your dean and my friend never misses an opportunity to brag on his students and his faculty when we are catching up. Yes, you're prepared to enter pharmacy, whether through a residency or fellowship portal, additional education to perhaps attain a master's degree in public health, or directly into a patient care position in any of the fabulous places where pharmacists take care of the public and the communities that they serve. I truly hope you'll find the opportunities over your 40 year or longer careers to be as fulfilling and rewarding as I have found mine to be. I know it to be true that the options available to me as I entered practice in the early 1980s don't hold a candle to the myriad of opportunities many of which have not been invented yet for pharmacists entering practice today. Yes, you are well prepared. But what do I mean about being positioned? Positioned to do what exactly? Let me take the experience of the months of the pandem pandemic to make this point clear. I honestly do not believe that pharmacists have ever been as supremely well positioned as our colleagues across the country and actually around the globe have proven to be in terms of being positioned to make numerous contributions to patients and communities during the COVID-19 crisis. Things were so chaotic back in the early months of the pandemic. No PPE, shortages of hand sanitizer and not to mention other essential things like toilet paper and emergency departments and ICUs were overflowing with very, very sick individuals. And where were the pharmacists? The short answer is everywhere, making hand sanitizer and compounding other medicines in short supply, staffing emergency departments and ICUs at their own health risk, pivoting to telepharmacy to support their interprofessional team members and provide care at a distance to those patients unable or too afraid to visit bricks and mortar healthcare facilities, including pharmacies. And at every opportunity, pharmacists were helping the public understand the confusing facts and clarifying the misinformation that was spinning out of control as rapidly as the virus was spreading. And of course, these contributions multiplied over the last five months since mid-December when COVID vaccines miraculously made their way to authorized use in less than nine months since the first cases were identified in the United States. Some pharmacists were responsible for elements of the clinical trials, while pharmacy faculty members were creating COVID tests and other inventions in their university labs. And hardly a day goes by that I don't learn of another awesome story of how pharmacists, pharmacy faculty members, and student pharmacists all across the country are committing their time and talent to the vaccination army that has gotten more shots in arms in our country than most any other country around the world. How did pharmacists get so well positioned to be on the front lines of this pandemic? There are two sides to this answer. On the one hand, pharmacists are exceptionally well prepared to identify and meet the needs of their communities. Since the mid-1990s, when laws and regulations began changing state by state to increase pharmacists' authority to immunize, initially against flu, then pneumonia, over 350,000 pharmacists and student pharmacists have been trained and certified to participate in the immunization neighborhood in healthcare. Had this not been the case, 
you would not have had the Biden administration declare in early April that they were increasing the federal pharmacy network to receive and administer vaccines from 17,000 pharmacies to over 40,000. Not only were pharmacists prepared, but they were also positioned to lead, like APHA immediate past president Michael Hoag, who was tapped to be the lead commander of the mass vaccination clinic on the campus of Loma Linda University in Southern California, where he serves as the dean of pharmacy. The other side of the story is that pharmacists were extremely fortunate that their state and national pharmacy associations were also prepared for the pandemic. Those of us serving as leaders or staff of your national pharmacy associations work together all the time, planning and executing advocacy efforts with state and national policymakers. This made it natural and fairly easy for us to begin working together over time in March of 2020 to articulate in a joint statement that pharmacists can and should play significant roles in addressing the needs of the public in testing, contact tracing, and ultimately vaccinating to arrest COVID-19. That commitment continues to this day. And in fact, we've begun to develop our advocacy strategies to secure the gains we have achieved under the emergency declarations from the White House and state governors after the pandemic so that we never again have to make up rules in the midst of an emergency like we have in this past year. Supremely prepared and beautifully positioned, my dreams for our profession are close to being fully realized, but not quite. Remember the third P was paid for providing patient care. Even as clearly essential as pharmacists contributions to the pandemic have been, securing payment for our patient care services remains our most significant challenge today. Pharmacists and pharmacies are paid inadequately for our management of drug distribution systems and that keep, that keep patients safe and our supply chain efficient and secure. But what truly holds us back from contributing all that you have been prepared to provide is the misalignment of payment policies from both public and, and private healthcare payers. The US cannot achieve the quadruple aim for healthcare until pharmacists are fully empowered with sustainable compensation to help other healthcare providers and patients manage medication use better. Thus, that said, I firmly believe that we are closer to achieving meaningful and sustainable payment for pharmacist patient care services than ever before. State and federal policymakers and private sector health insurers are realizing that we cannot achieve desired health and economic outcomes or eliminate health disparities and create equity for all persons without fully engaging the pharmacy profession. Increasingly, they recognize that medications, if properly managed, are central to achieving these aims. And evidence mounts that the right way to do this is making sure that well-prepared and properly positioned pharmacists are part of the strategy. Class of 2021, you are prepared. We are making progress in ensuring that you will be well positioned to use your knowledge, skills, and passion to improve medication use in both individuals and populations. And before you are very far into your brilliant pharmacy careers, we will surmount the challenges of securing sustainable compensation for the life-saving services you and your classmates can and will provide. I wish you the very best of success and happiness from this day forward and sincerely welcome you into the pharmacy profession. Congratulations. Bruce Harrell became the 21st president of the University of Iowa on November 2nd, 2015. He received a Bachelor of Engineering degree from Purdue University and a Master of Business Administration degree from Harvard. President Harrell served on the faculty of Harvard Business School from 2008 to 2014 with dual appointments to the entrepreneurial and strategy units. He was faculty chair of the Building New Businesses and Established Organizations program. He has served in several corporate leadership positions with Kraft General Foods, Boston Market Company, and IBM, focusing on strategy and transformation. 
President Harold has also served as a consultant on leadership, organic growth, and strategic renewal. A reflection of President Harold's exceptional leadership abilities has been the much needed steady hand he has displayed in helping the university navigate uncharted waters over the course of the past year. We are deeply honored to have President Bruce Harold with us this morning to confer degrees. President Harold, these candidates have completed all the requirements for the, for the degree Doctor of Pharmacy and are recommended to you by the faculty of the College of Pharmacy for the conferring of their degrees. On recommendation of the faculty of the College of Pharmacy and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents, State of Iowa, I confer on each of you the degree Doctor of Pharmacy as qualified and designated. Dr. Muhammad Zain Abbas. Dr. Michael Allenbach. Dr. Zachary Anderson. Dr. Peyton Elizabeth Augustine, with distinction. Dr. Brian Joseph Autry, with highest distinction. Dr. Emily Barmore. Dr. Whitney Camille Blazen, with distinction. Dr. Corey Joe Bolkin. Dr. Tyler Justin Brackey. Dr. Julie Ann Brewer, with distinction. Dr. Austin Lee Callahan, with distinction. Dr. Megan Renee Castellano. Dr. Guadalupe Chavez, with distinction. Dr. Ramey Joe Chavez, with distinction. Dr. Catherine Chang. Dr. Reagan Olivia Coyle. Dr. Alec James Darrow, with highest distinction. Dr. Drake Dauber. Dr. Ishaya Gajira David. Dr. Noah Dahl, with distinction. Dr. Elena Joe Feltus, with distinction. Dr. Taylor Ann Dawn Fry, with distinction. Dr. Shushana Galstian. Dr. Amber Garthwaite. Dr. Lauren Ashley Geezer, with high distinction. Dr. Alexander Thomas Goodwin, with distinction. Dr. Sarah Adrian Greiner, with highest distinction. Dr. Melissa Kate Griggs. Dr. Brandy Hageman, with highest distinction. Dr. Stephanie Catherine Hay, with high distinction. Dr. Brandon John Hafel, with high distinction. Dr. Holly Lane Henschel. Dr. Lauren Elizabeth Hetzler, with high distinction. Dr. Boylam Hong, with distinction. Dr. Livia Sue Hush, with highest distinction. Dr. Nicole Ann Hulsebus, with distinction. Dr. Colette Marie Hussey. Dr. Andrew John Jadis, with highest distinction. Dr. Caitlin Rose Johnson. Dr. Anna May Kane, with highest distinction. Dr. Nathan Matthew Carlin. Dr. Maxim Kozlowski. 
Dr. Jin Ko, with high distinction. Dr. Helena Kabuzi. Dr. Claire Catherine Kozik. Dr. Catherine Rosemary Cruz, with distinction. Dr. Stephen Landa, with high distinction. Dr. Christine Lawson, with highest distinction. Dr. Bowen Lee. Dr. Meredith Nancy Lumberg, with high distinction. Dr. Kyle Richard Mayer, with distinction. Dr. Giovanna Maistorovich, with distinction. Dr. J.C. Mandernack, with high distinction. Dr. Jacqueline Lee Morrow, with highest distinction. Dr. Maureen Elizabeth Martin, with high distinction. Dr. Melissa Rose Matcha. Dr. Rebecca Ann McKay, with high distinction. Dr. Paul William McClyman. Dr. Aaron Michael McDonough. Dr. Crystal Tonica McElhose, with distinction. Dr. Patrick Michael McFadden. Dr. Amanda Elaine Merck, with high distinction. Dr. Tatum Meyer. Dr. Holly K. Miller. Dr. Adrian Montero. Dr. Haley Lynn Morrison, with high distinction. Dr. Tyler Michael Morrison. Dr. Logan Thomas Mujin. Dr. Han Tiam Win, with highest distinction. Dr. Julie Ha Win. Dr. Locke Ton Win. Dr. Allison Michelle Norris. Dr. Shannon Claire O'Leary, with distinction. Dr. Ellen Bridget Overholzer Strait. Dr. Michael J. Parisi Mercado. Dr. Ruju Patel, with distinction. Dr. Rutu Patel. Dr. Caitlin Nicole Pegum. Dr. Cassie Yuan Pham, with high distinction. Dr. Elijah Truitt Porter, with distinction. Dr. Jalen Brene Daggs Polkrabic, with distinction. Dr. Jasmine Cecile Purpura. Dr. George Larry Chi. Dr. Sneha Ramprasad. Dr. Alyssa K. Rineker. Dr. Lucas Timothy Roach, with high distinction. Dr. Mitchell David Robach, with distinction. Dr. Bibiana A. Ruiz Granado. Dr. Andrew John Sabers, with high distinction. Dr. Eason Sola. Dr. Jessica Summer Satterfeld. Dr. Logan David Schmalfeld, with high distinction. Dr. Matthew Joseph Schoenberger. Dr. Abby K. Schwery with highest distinction. Dr. Carly Marie Seiler. Dr. Claire Elizabeth Slattery, with distinction. 
Dr. Marissa Rosemary Snyder, with high distinction. Dr. Jiyun So. Dr. Claire Monique Sons. Dr. Shelby Stafford, with distinction. Dr. Matthew James Stahl. Dr. Colton Alexander Stout. Dr. Evan James Streck. Dr. Cassandra Lee Streeter, with high distinction. Dr. Sarah Elizabeth Tappy. Dr. Louis Joseph Tiberi IV. Dr. Courtney Allison Tejas. Dr. Daniel Scott Van Dyne. Dr. Diana Mary Carol Winke. Dr. Rachel Catherine Whitesit, with high distinction. Dr. Amber Leandra Williams. Dr. Matthew R. Yates. On behalf of the Board of Regents, State of Iowa, let me give my heartfelt congratulations to everyone graduating today. Today is a day for celebration, and we celebrate this moment of achievement that each of you has reached today. The past year has been one like none that any of us have experienced. The pandemic has changed so many things about the way we live our lives. This goes for pursuing higher education as well. It has made things far more challenging for you as you completed your studies but you have persevered through unprecedented circumstances to achieve your goal of receiving your degree. Commencement is when we fulfill the most crucial mission of higher education, graduating talented people like you who will go on to make a positive impact on our society. Though today's commencement ceremony is not a traditional format and not what you were expecting when your college career started, this in no way takes away from the tremendous accomplishment of graduating. The common theme of all commencement ceremonies is that we celebrate the value of education and your achievement. As you embark on an exciting new chapter of your life and the many successes that lie ahead of you, take a moment to reflect that you are all now graduates of the University of Iowa, one of the great public universities in our country. You should be proud of the people that help support you and help get you to this significant moment as a mom and someone who supported her children and others during their college journey. I can say that they are extremely proud of you. Receiving a degree is one of life's truly great moments. Once again, congratulations to you all. The Board of Regents State of Iowa is very pleased and proud to call you alumni of the University of Iowa. Congratulations to the class of 2021 from the University of Iowa. We are so proud of you, Drake. Congratulations, Dr. Dauber. Congratulations, we are so proud of you. Hey, Son. We are here today to congratulate you for finally graduating from the University of Iowa Pharmacy School. It was a long seven year journey. We know you've been through a lot, but it was worth it. All those times seeing you work your butt off and breaking through all those tough times made me myself become more confident on a lots of stuff in my past. Congratulations again. We hope you have a great time and wish you good luck. Thank you to the best on ever. Congratulations, Anna. Way to go, Anna. We're so proud of you. If we didn't have pharmacists, the world wouldn't know what to do with these. Congratulations, Congratulations Lauren, Lauren, and, and the, the pharmacy, pharmacy class of 2021. Congrats, Chrissy. We're very proud of you. Woohoo! Love you, Chrissy. We're so proud of you. Congratulations, Jasmine. We love you. 
Hey, Dr. Amber Garthwaite, congratulations and love from all the Garthwaites. Yay! Congratulations, congratulations Chrissy. Chrissy. We love you and we're very, very proud of you. Yay!